really feels like it has been years since I last made a video on the drama in the drag race world. I mean, the tea recently has been more stale than the food left in the workroom after filming. But girly, do I have some piping hot tea to spill for you dolls today. The drama is basically about Miss Thick and Juicy herself, Roxy Andrews. So, basically a few nights ago, Roxy was at a viewing party with season 12 winner Jada Essence Hall and season 8's early eliminated Nyasha Lopez was the host for the night. Now, someone must have made Roxy's drinks a little bit stronger than what she asked for because although she had a mask on, she definitely left her filter back at home in her drag closet. Like seriously, Bestie spilled everything we've been wanting to know about what drag race producers are like behind the scenes. So to start off the night of fun and shenanigans, Miss Andrews spoke about her relationship with Alabama star. <coughs> Sorry, I mean, Tamisha Iman, and if they've had any interactions since season 13 aired, to which Roxy told us this. We're all curious. Um, she know, doesn't follow but, me. Yeah, she doesn't. Okay, well, there you go. So I didn't follow her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. You're really going at it. The level of honesty. Just <laughs> Do y'all want me to lie? She said, she said hell no. 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 She said, I support you and I be, I, and bravo for uh, auditioning and getting on. But bitch, if you don't fuck with me, I don't fuck with you either. <laughs> well. That was a simple enough answer, girl. I guess things must be popping off at the Tamisha Mon Network because the drag peach does not speak to any of the dolls anymore. Anyways, the conversation then switched to our favorite season, All Stars 2. And this is where things start getting as thick and juicy as Roxy herself because she went on to dish out a little behind the scenes story from filming, which involved the queens being put on ice and an encounter Roxy and Tatiana had with producers outside in the smoking area. This specific episode, it was All Stars, and um, we couldn't talk about what was going on, and we were on ice outside waiting to go into the uh, runway. And me and Tatiana were smokers, so bitch, we're just talking shit, and the lady had said, shut up! And Tatiana went into saying, you know, she's a grown man, and you can't speak to her like that. Needless to say, she got sent home that episode. So we didn't know what the fuck was going on, bitch. We're like, uh-oh, like don't talk back to people. Then there was on All Stars also Fifi and Alyssa got in a big old argument and they were calling the producers over and a bunch of shit happens, bitch. We're living our lives in there. Oh my God, girly. I guess this really gives some proof that Tatiana was set up all along. We all knew that she was robbed, but I guess it doesn't matter because Tatiana has been thriving since then. I'm kidding. Tatiana is such a queen and I love her so much. Moving on to the drama though. So do you guys remember that super tense moment back in season five when the top four were getting ready and Jinx asked the girls what their favorite moment was from the season and Roxy responded with when you were in the bottom two? Yeah. So it turns out that the producers literally manufactured the entire thing. Girl, the shade of it all. To be fair though, it was TV gold, so I can't be that mad. Anyway, here's what Roxy had to say about the whole situation. Let me set up the scene for you, okay? We are stressed the fuck out. I had just filmed that courtroom scene thing that I knew just I had bombed it. And um, so they were just like, ladies, we're still filming a TV show. I know you guys are stressed out. You don't want to talk, but we're still filming a TV show. You need to talk. And they kept telling me they want drama. They want drama. They want drama. So I went to go pee and I come back and before I walk into the workroom, sometimes they'll stop us and they'll say, hey, can you go talk to so-and-so about this or whatever? And they were like, they stopped me and I had had it, bitch. And she was like, girl, Roxy, I know I can count on you. And I'm like, okay, bitch, I did bad in the courtroom. So let me get some brownie points with this bitch. She wants some drama, Mish. And um, <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Mish. <laughs> so, um. She was like, girl, we need drama, we need drama. And I was like, okay, bitch. So I walk into the work, I I'm gonna give it to you. Give me a second. So I walk into the workroom and poor little Jinx. She's just like blow drying her hair or something. <laughs> She's like, she goes, Roxy, what's your favorite moment? And <laughs> see, I couldn't think of nothing. The first thing that came out of my mouth was, like, bitch, when you were in the bottom too. Girl, that was, I'm telling you, that was one of the harshest moments for me because everybody was reading the fuck out of me for saying it. 
But it wasn't my fault. They asked and I was under pressure. And that's what the fuck happened. I low key feel bad for Roxy here. She got red to filth for saying that. Because at this time, she was already being called a bully and a villain online. And finding out that this moment wasn't even her decision really puts into perspective how manipulative Drag Race production can be. No! Miss Thick and Juicy was not done yet because she really fed the girls gays and days what we all wanted. Because bestie, we were starving. So, the topic segues along to All Stars 5, where Roxy Andrews was cast as a lip sync assassin. She explained to the viewing party how the Ariana Grande song that she lip synced to was actually supposed to be a completely different song and spilled some tea on the whole process of being a lip sync assassin. Take a look at this, dolls. I'm at the airport, girl, and I'm like, oh my God, they're calling, they're calling. I'm with my friend, Greg. And um, she called, I'm like, hey, girl. And she's like, hey, Roxy, I'm ready to give you your song. Are you ready? We're so excited, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, mind you, I had already made the thick and juicy outfit. I'm ready to go. And um, she goes, your song is going to be Why'd You Come In Here Looking Like That by Dolly Parton. And I said, thank you so much for the opportunity, but I'm not going to go. And she was like, oh, my God, why? What happened? Do you all remember that episode? It was the barnyard, the, the RuPaul's barbecue and a lot of the fans caught on to why was it Ariana Grande when they were doing a, a barnyard barbecue something because the song usually goes with what they're doing. No, ma'am, Roxy Andrews was not competing for $100,000. Roxy Andrews was not getting paid shit, bitch, and she was not going to do Dolly Parton. Not even that because I love Dolly Parton. It was If you don't know that song, Why'd You Come In Here Looking Like That, it's a twangy country song. I'm a Cuban Puerto Rican queen that's gonna go on there and be hokey and country and I didn't want any, I didn't want to offend anybody and I don't want to get red for doing it, which is the reason why I told them I could not do that song. Needless to say, 30 minutes, they called back later and they had another song for me. She really said hashtag girl boss to the crew and I love her for that. Bestie was not about to get sabotaged as an assassin like Kennedy or Cameron. And because of that, we got an iconic lip sync performance. Anyways, we now get thrown back to season five again. The conversation of producers introducing drama for TV moves on to the infamous rivalry between Alyssa Edwards and Coco Montrese. And you already know what I'm about to say. Yas, queens. The fight between Alyssa and Coco was actually instigated by the producers. And who did they do this through, you may be thinking? Bingo! The villain of the season, Roxy Andrews. Anyway, listen to what Roxy had to say about the beef. They'll keep telling, like, they told me to go talk to Coco and Alyssa about their drama. She's like, it's, it's about time they tell the story. Will you go ask them? I'm like, putting down my foundation. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and I was like, sure. So I walk over, they're at the, they're at, they had it all set up. They're at the uh, box where the fabric is that we used to have in the corner. And they were like, I just walked up and I was like, Coco, Alyssa, what happened in the pageant? And walked away. <laughs> That's all I did. And I was like, you asked me to start it. I started it and there we go. <laughs> uh. I swear these producers were really just plotting these dramas in all along so that Rue could release the song of the century. Don't lie, I bet you all have had Blame It On The Edit stuck in your head for weeks. Girl, I have, and it's becoming a problem. At this point, Nayasha decides to chip in with a little behind the scenes tea from season eight, explaining how the production team were not having it with Dax exclamation point and Layla McQueen because apparently they weren't talking enough. Season eight, I remember they asked one, they, they told Dax and Layla, um, they like reprimanded them. They were like, you guys aren't talking. You need to talk. Like, where's your personality? Like they like got on them because they weren't talking like at and all. And you'll go home. They'll, they'll find a way to send you home. Like if you're not good, <laughs> it'll be like the first person to go home. If you land on the bottom, they're going to send you home. If you're not talking, it's television. I'm living. Jada was so funny at this viewing party. So now the shenanigans take a really unexpected turn because out of all of the hundreds of queens that have appeared on the countless seasons and spin-offs of Drag Race, Roxy starts talking about the queen of wig styling and scamming, her season five sister, Serena Chacha. And Roxy's thoughts on an early out season full of queens who fans think were eliminated far too early in their original season. Season. I just would love to see the girls that didn't get that chance. that just had a bad week and went home, but they're amazing drag queens. I would love to see them come back for Absolutely. and compete. 
Totally. I think there's a there's a big group of girls that haven't had that opportunity. I just get kind of frustrated when I see girls that are given the opportunity over and over and over yeah. and over again. That's right. What, yeah. That's what's pissing me off because I've I've seen someone on All Stars already twice or going on three times, and you're like, there's someone at home that went home. Like, what was Serena you know what I mean? Cha Cha really gonna do? No, girl. <laughs> Someone had to go home first. Listen. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. That one. <laughs> I love you, Serena. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. I love but, Serena. Yeah, I just want to. I want the girls that I know are going to turn it that just didn't get Thank the right <laughs> amount of time on the show. I love my Serena. I really do. And she has a wig business. Um, I'm trying to back up. Back you're, that trying to, you're trying to save this bitch. You're trying trying to wait, wait. No, I do love Serena, and she did have a glow up. It just didn't. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> I'm a caller after this if I had her number. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she just keeps calling. <laughs> no, I love it. it. I really do. I really do. See, and this is what happened to me on Drag Race. This is how I play, and then they just edit out the back part. You know. The just kiddings never come on. The girl, you look like a goddamn <laughs> the fool. Laugh I'm never kidding. happens. This might be one of my favorite viewing parties that I have ever had the absolute pleasure of watching. Like, I don't know what Roscoe's were putting in their drinks that night, but all of this tea literally came out of nowhere. Oh, uh... The fun, unfortunately, had to come to an end, with the last topic that the queens gossiped about was the thought of there being a Big Brother-style drag race season. Which, let me just say, RuPaul better make that happen before she even thinks of making an AJ and the Queen sequel. Because can you imagine how amazing it would be to see a bunch of drag queens stuck in a big house together, being made to compete stupid challenges and getting into even more drama? Bestie, I would pay so much to see that happen. But enough of me rambling. Here's what Roxy had to say. Like All Stars or any drag race season was like Big Brother kind of like style. Who would you want on your alliance? Oh. Um, I would pick Serena Cha-Cha because <laughs> I would take her all the way to the end because I know she ain't going to win. Bitch, you <laughs> play too much. Too much. No! Uh, that was literally coming off of what we were talking about earlier. No! <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, um, wow. I would pick Relaska Talks for sure because I just know they, would, they wouldn't... Like, we wouldn't scheme on each other like people would think, and then, um... That's a vulture-ass move, bitch, to say I'm gonna take Relaska, Tox, and Serena. <laughs> you are not... A- <laughs> well, they gotta throw one to the wolves. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> That's my team! Shady boot. Honestly, it's so crazy to me that most of the dramatic moments that we see on Drag Race are made by the producers. As much as RuPaul herself can deny the existence of certain queens getting a shady edit, to make them look bad on TV, I can only imagine how much of a stressful, pressure cooker environment it must be filming a season of Drag Race. I mean, if I'm in drag for more than a couple of hours, my wig starts itching and giving me a headache, and the high heels literally murder my feet to the point that I feel like I need to be in a wheelchair, and girl, don't even start on the issue of needing to go pee-pee. I've got to hand it to these queens, because dealing with all of that for 24-7 for weeks on end, while also having to compete in wild challenges every day, would literally make me go insane. So, what do you guys think about all the tea that the queens at Roscoe's were spilling. Honestly, I wish I was at this viewing party so bad, because not only would I have gotten some of whatever those dolls were drinking, but I also would have gotten my life at all of this drama. 